Assalamu alaikum guys, welcome back to my channel. I pray that you're all in the best of health and Iman. If you are new, welcome. My name is Nafisa. I am a relationship and trauma informed coach. I help women manage their trauma, deal with relationship issues. So if you're interested in being coached in those areas, you can find me over on my website, which I will leave linked in the description box down below. But over here on YouTube, I make Islamic lifestyle as well as relationship style content. So if you're interested in that, then definitely make sure you subscribe. So guys, today's video, I wanted to make a fun video to kind of reflect back on our childhood and stories and information that we have been taught about what love looks like and what we can expect from relationships so in today's video we're going to be discussing that but before we begin my islamic reminder for this video is that guys look to the sunnah of the prophet muhammad peace be upon him and our righteous predecessors as examples of how to manage our relationships they are the best examples that we have as muslims looking to whatever company is creating whatever cartoons <laughs> looking to people's um you know, relationship goals on Instagram and all of these other things are not the examples that we should be taking because at the end of the day, especially in this day and age of social media, people only show you what they want you to see. Absolutely. We only show you what we want you to see. And so you never know the, the full picture. You think a couple is happily married and then all of a sudden they make an announcement of divorce or you think someone isn't married and all of a sudden they make an announcement that they are. You never fully know what's going on in people's lives. So let's not idealize what we think relationships should be based upon what people are showing us on social media. Let's really look at the reality of how it was that the righteous predecessors the prophet peace and blessings be upon him how did he manage his family how did him he manage his relationships how did he manage his relationships how did the his wives manage to live with him in peace well these are the type of people and examples that we really should be taking from number one a romantic partner or a marriage will save us from our dysfunctional traumatic families you guys know, I don't even need to mention any names of any particular companies. You know that we have seen countless movies as children where it's like, you know, there's a lady or a young woman or a girl. She's living in this house. She's being treated like trash and she's waiting for the day when she will meet her prince who will come and save her from this awful household that she's stuck in. Um, and he will marry her and they will live happily ever after. This idea exists in many young women's minds. So if they are in a dysfunctional family, things aren't working out correctly, parents are traumatized, they're traumatizing the children, everybody's mistreating one another, there's just negative dynamics within that family, the young girl growing up in that family is thinking, oh my God, I can't wait one day till I get married and I get out of this house so that I can escape. So she is seeing the man as somebody who's going to come and save her so that she can escape her dysfunctional family. The reality and why that is actually a lie is that somebody else cannot come and save you from the dysfunction in your family. Your family remains your family and as long as you're a Muslim, you can't even cut ties with your family completely. And so you will remain connected with that family. Really, what you must do is work on yourself, work on healing your own trauma, work on identifying what are the repeated traumas that happen in my family pattern and how can I make different choices that can prevent that, not just make different choices, actually heal um, so that I can prevent that from happening so that I can have a more fulfilling and a more um, happier relationship moving forward with whomever I meet, whether it be, be friends, whether it be a romantic partner, whoever I meet, whether it be my children in the future, so that I do not repeat that same tra um, trauma onto the people that I meet. So it's not that a man will come and save you or that a man should be the one who will come and save you from a traumatic um, family situation if the family is dysfunctional nine times out of ten it remains dysfunctional if your mother is narcissistic nine times out of ten even if you get married and leave the home she is still narcissistic she will still try to control your life um if your father is the same the same thing 
negative people with their negative energies with the trauma that they are going through and how they're passing it on they do it without sometimes even intending to do it it's just a part of who they are and so essentially you have to work on your trauma you have to work on setting boundaries which i have a boundary setting masterclass. i will leave the link to it in the description box down below you have to heal okay and you have to learn how to navigate working with the people in your family who are dysfunctional rather than expecting for a man to come and do that another issue with having that expectations is that we then put so much pressure on our partners that come into our lives to be the ones to save us from whatever issue it is that we're going through we're expecting them to be the ones to heal us to make us feel whole to make us feel loved to make us feel careful and then of course the reality is no one can really fulfill all of that for you that's your work that you have to do and so when you then come to that realization you then feel disappointed in your partner because they did not meet the expectation that you had of them so reality is somebody else is not coming to save you from whatever dysfunctional situation you are in that is your work to do with the help of God that is your work to do you must do it before you move on and, and continue to build relationships with other people especially in relation in romantic in romantic relationships if you want your romantic relationships to thrive so I am sorry it is a lie that your significant other is going to be the one who's going to come and save you from the dysfunction in your family you may be physically removed from that environment but you are still forever attached and until you learn how to cope and how to deal with the people in your lives especially your family members then not much is going to change from you just being physically away from them the next lie that our childhood movies taught us about love and relationships is that happily ever after means you never have any issues after that yes so essentially what this is teaching us is that if we find someone that we fall in love with we should have a happily ever after we should look like there's no more problems after that everybody is just happy 100 percent of the time and that is how a healthy relationship is supposed to look like i'm sorry I'm about to break it down. There is no such thing as a relationship that is happy all of the time. I'm sorry, it does not exist. Every single relationship, be it friendship, be it love, be it falling in love with a man, um, be it a relationship with your parents, your siblings, your friends, whoever, there's gonna come a time where it might be a little bit rocky. What you must bear in mind is not putting up with things that are toxic so that they do not damage your life and so for any young woman out there who's thinking the second I have a negative encounter with anybody that's it I'm out straight away no second chances you cannot live life like that you will have what you perceive to be negative encounters with people at times again make sure it doesn't move into the toxic realm but you will have disagreements with people you will fall out with people you will fall out with your with your your partner you will fall out with the person that you love you will disagree sometimes they will keep doing things that will just annoy you that is reality and it doesn't mean that that person doesn't love you and it doesn't mean you don't love that person that's just reality happily ever after does not mean that i end up in a relationship where we never have a problem that does not exist the third lie that childhood movies taught us about relationships and love is that true love never dies now what is true love (laughs) you know because that's that's where the problem begins true love is very subjective okay what one person sees as true love is not what another person sees as, as true love and this idea essentially is teaching young women who are watching the, these uh, movies and young girls is that the type of love that would be considered as true love should be a love that is unconditional. It should be a romantic love that is unconditional. And again, I'm sorry to break it down. In my opinion, I don't think any love is unconditional. I think if you fall in love with somebody, it is absolutely conditional. Now, I know some people may be thinking, no, that's not actually true. Some love is unconditional because some women put up with so much rubbish for the rest of their lives. They may put up with it, but they don't love it. They don't like it. They don't like themselves for putting up with it. They see themselves as weak for allowing somebody else mistreat them so much, right? And I would also argue that sometimes some of us are in love with the idea of love or we're in love with the idea 
of the person that we're in love with. So we formed, we've created a, a character in our minds about who this person, who we think this person is. And we're falling in love with that idea rather than falling in love with the actual person. Which is why I say love is conditional. Because if we step out and come into the reality of who this person actually is, we'll realise that we don't love who the person actually is. But that takes a lot of work in actually admitting that this man is really who he's showing me. I think a lot of the times when women are like, no, my love is unconditional, we'll love him forever, no matter what he does to me, I'll love him. They're not really in love with him because the real him may be mistreating you. The real him may be oppressing you. The real him may be a narcissist, but you're trauma bonded. So you're thinking that that's love, number one. And number two, you're in love with the idea of who you want him to be or who he per portrayed himself to be at the beginning. The real person you're probably not even in love with that real person. And then again, there is the idea that we're in love with the idea of love. Most of us just want to be attached to somebody. We want to be able to say, oh, my husband. It feels so amazing just to say my husband, just to say my boyfriend. It feels so good to a lot of us. We're in love with the idea of love. So we're not actually in love with the person. So I believe that love is conditional, okay? And this idea that true love never dies isn't true. If that person harms you to your limit, you will get to a point where you fall out of love with them. You will. It might be slow. It might take years. Everybody's limit is different. But you would get to a point where you'll, you'll be like, you know what? I'm done. I've had enough. And so I'm sorry, ladies. There is no such thing as true love never dies. If you don't put the effort that is required to, to pour into your partner as they are pouring into you, your relationship can absolutely die. I don't care how true it is. It can die. The love can die. The love can wither away. And so what we should really be taking out of that is that we have to put the effort in our relationships. We can't just sit there and expect that we just fell in love and it wasn't our fault. You can't help who you fall in love with. Love just happened to me. And so love is just going to stay with me. That's not the reality. You put in the work, you put in the effort to maintain love. Because guess what? Love is conditional. And if you mistreat the one that you love, it's very, very, very possible that they can and will fall out of love with you. The last point that I want to talk about kind of reflects back onto my first point, And that is that if you fall down to rock bottom, expect a man to come and save you. Now, it would be nice, wouldn't it? It would be nice to always expect a romantic partner to come and save us when we're down and out and we are rock bottom. But here's another reality. Your partner, your romantic partner, be it a boyfriend or a husband, will not always be there to pick you up when you fall. This is a harsh reality of life. Those who have experienced life to some extent know this firsthand. Sometimes you are at your rock bottom and you're thinking, maybe my spouse will come and lift me up. And you're looking around, waiting for him, expecting him to come and lift you up or expecting her to come and lift you up. But they do not have it in their own capacity to lift you up. And so you're left there thinking, my God, I really can't depend on people the way that I thought I should be able to depend on people. And as Muslims, it brings us back to Allah to teach you and I the lesson that ultimately Allah is the only one who will always be there for us no matter what. This expectation that we keep having of people, we keep putting them in these places that they cannot fulfill. We need to unlearn those lessons and realize that people cannot always be there to save you when you need them to save you. They will not always be there. Either they may not want to, either they may, may have their own issues that they're dealing with in life, or they just don't have the capacity to be able to carry you on top of whatever it is they're also going, that's also going on in their lives. Or they just don't have the strength to do so. So we must relieve men especially from this consistent expectations that 
we women are allowed to fall and they should just come pick us up all of the time. And again, it leans back into this idea that a man should always be strong, physically strong, mentally strong. He should always be ready to pick me up and to pick up his whole family. When, when the family is falling apart or when a woman is falling apart, a man should always be ready to come and do that. But a man is also human. He, he doesn't always have it in his capacity to come and pick you up where you are. So relieve him of the expectation. And once again, do your own work to heal and lean on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and lean on what you can do to help yourself rather than having all of these expectations from a man and then feeling bad about yourself or feeling bad and feeling let down in life because the man in your life, whether it's your father, your brother, your husband, whoever, because they did not fulfill the role that you expected them to fulfill. So my ladies, as you can see, these lessons really run down deep. Initially, when we're watching these movies, they just seem like some fun. They just seem like, you know, just it's just a fun child movie. It doesn't really mean anything. But as you can see, we are really learning lessons from these things. And a lot of these lessons are learned from an unconscious level. Like we draw meanings from the things that we see, the things that we hear. We draw meanings from our experiences. And so that's how we reach certain conclusions that then follow us throughout, throughout our lives if we don't work on ourselves. So essentially, ladies, do your work. Lean on God. Depend on him because he's the only one that will never leave you. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please share it with other ladies, okay? Share it with them. Let's all talk about this, you know, what other lessons do you think um, childhood movies taught us women, especially about relationships that were not true? You know, let's talk about it in the comment section down below. I really love you guys for being here, for always supporting me, always, always supporting this channel. Thank you guys so much for being here and I will speak to you in my next one. By the way, ladies, have you seen this video that I made earlier on? If you haven't, be sure to watch it and I will speak to you over there. Bye, ladies.